People of Reddit who spend lots of time in remote areas, what is the creepiest or scariest thing you have encountered? Like and subscribe or I'll haunt you tonight. I used to have an old cemetery in the woods near my house, had graves in it from the 1840s all the way to 1960s. During the winter when all the leaves had fallen you could see the clearing from our living room. Every now and then, I would walk past the window and catch sight of a guy in a dark black suit just sitting on one of the tombstones, but when I turned it was nothing. It used to drive me freaking insane. I was never really scared of it, just annoyed that it always happened. Eventually, I got so sick of it that my cousin and I went out and cleaned up the cemetery, racked all the leaves, pulled out the vines, chopped down a few trees that were growing to close, and even scrubbed down the headstones. Then loudly announced after we were done, look, we cleaned this place up for y'all, please stop trying to mess with us. If you want to sit around, go ahead, but don't just disappear when we look your way, it's really annoying. Never happened to me again, though it did happen to friends when they came over and my baby brother claims to have gone out and talked to the guy in the suit. Said his name was William. I used to live in the middle of nowhere. We had one neighbor whose house we couldn't even see through the trees and hills. On the other side of us, up another hill there was a dirt road that basically went nowhere. At the beginning of the dirt road, there was this old abandoned church which made it automatically creepy. Anyway, berries used to grow down this dirt road so we'd go pick them. On the way back one day, we got an extremely strong scent of cologne. A quick scan didn't show anyone, but every time the wind blew, we got another whiff. Still don't know where the scent was coming from, but it creeped me out big time. You don't think about how no one could hear you scream until you're forced to. This was probably about 6 or 7 years ago when I was about 16 years old. I lived with my dad on a small farm in southern Oregon. There are about 2 to 3 neighbors spread out around a 5 or so mile radius. Everywhere else is just woods, just these gnarly oak trees and dirt roads leading off to different hunting stands or places for teenagers to go and drink without interruption. My dad plays keyboard in a band, and as long as I can remember, he would take off on the occasional Friday or Saturday night to play in one of the local bars, coming back around 2 or 3 in the morning. Anyways, on one of these nights that he was away, me and my brother were playing some Xbox in the front room when I heard the home phone ring, we had a landline back then. I went to pick it up and it happened to be our closest neighbor. His name was Kurt and he operated a full-on dairy farm, unlike our small homesteader-esque farm of a few goats and a couple geese and chickens. So I asked him what was up, as he only really called, and never so late in the night, to tell us about some emergency or situation. Kurt told me, as my blood literally seemed to turn to ice, that someone had been slamming against his barn door. He told me that him and the missus had been watching TV when they noticed between commercial breaks that there was a crashing, splintering sound coming from outside, towards the barn where the horse's stables. Apparently, Kurt went outside and found a huge hole in the door to the barn and went in to investigate. I don't really know what he saw inside, but I swear to God, I will remember what he said to me for the rest of my life. Kurt told me that something had broken into his barn, and that there was a smell like nothing he had ever smelled before. The thing he told me, before telling me he was headed to our farm, was that he saw the something loping towards our house. He told me to hang up, to go and take my younger brother and hide. I hung up and just stood there. To be completely honest, I was high as hell. Both me and my brother had been smoking a lot that night, and so I was fairly stunned by what I heard. I went back to the living room where my brother was and sat down, fairly perplexed. This part of the story is where it might seem like fiction but I swear to God this happened. I started hearing my goats bleeding outside, the way they do when I get home from work or when somebody approaches. They started bleeding, then they started screaming. If you've never heard an animal scream for help, then I envy you. At first, my brother and I just sat there, wide-eyed, listening in disbelief and horror, trying to just comprehend what was going on. Then both of us just kind of stood up and started towards the door. I was high and scared and I definitely still remembered my conversation with Kurt not 15 minutes ago. And while I'm certainly not a badass by any means, there is no way any compassionate person can listen to a goat or something being murdered and screaming without doing something. That's just what was happening.
When we opened the door to the outside, we smelled and heard it already. The sound was utterly horrifying. A pure unrelenting scream from one of our dear goats, combined with a horrible smell. I can only describe the smell as something like iron, I think that was the goat blood, with a moldy wet fur, sort of pungent foot kind of smell. I looked from the doorstep, our goat pen is literally steps away from the door, we love our goats, and saw the horribly mutilated bodies of a few of our goats, something big was hunched over the carcasses. A couple of the goats were sitting in the corner bleeding helplessly. My brother slammed the door shut and started sobbing. I sat down on the floor, and I'm not ashamed to say I was crying. I'm gonna wrap this up quickly because I hate talking about this, let alone writing about this. But essentially after a few minutes, Kurt showed up and a few gunshots later, he came inside to tell us that everything was okay again. He never told us what he saw, but he told my dad. The next day, my dad went out and bought a rifle. I live in the woods in the middle of nowhere creepy stuff happens all the time. When we first moved in here, I kept thinking I'd hear someone walking in the house while I was alone. It's a flood zone, so the house is on stilts and you can hear footsteps when anyone walks across the floor. Of course, this is Texas, so I just grab my handgun and go see if someone had come in. Also, my mother-in-law has a key, and when she drops in and leaves things for the family, she sometimes won't relock the door. I kept feeling like I was going to walk into a room and someone would be there. Just feeling oddly watched all day for a few days. My husband didn't think anything of it, and one night, he jumped out of bed, grabbed his handgun, and started going through the house slamming all the doors wide open. He said he heard banging in the kitchen like someone was going through the pantry. He was adamant he had heard someone. Nothing, doors still locked. My niece got home from her grandmother's house and a few nights later asked if she could sleep on a cot in our room. She's a teenager, not a small kid, so I asked her what was wrong. She didn't want to tell us because we wouldn't believe her, just that she didn't want to be alone. She said she heard banging in the kitchen, and when she heard that or felt like someone was in the house, she would see a man in the window of her room, so she basically noped out and came to us. We let her stay, and the next day, we were all a little uneasy. My husband, a notorious non-believer in the paranormal, came in looking shaken and said he had closed her door after bringing her laundry into the room, and a man had been smiling at him in the window. The windows on the house are almost 20 feet in the air because of the stilts the house sits on. I don't live in a rural area, I live in a small town on the south coast of England, and it's true we don't have many scary urban myths or whatnot, but crime is a problem anywhere. When I was in final year of school, so at 16, we used to party in a woodland military training area on the beach side of the town. We used to build a big fire, take an amp and listen to loud music with drugs and alcohol. It was a nice spot, quite secluded and off the dog trails, so besides my group of friends, only a few people would know about it. Anyway at about 11 p.m. on a Saturday, me and a couple friends were arriving to this get-together a little late. And as we're walking down the main dog walking trail, we pass two men and a woman. One of the men had his arm locked in hers, and the other hand a hand on her shoulder. We didn't think anything of it, the two men were laughing and we assumed they were drunk and doing the same thing we were elsewhere in the woodland park. At one point in the night, we heard a fox's mating call, you know the one, a gutless scream. Yeah, you can probably see where this is going. So the party goes on well into the night and several of us didn't end up leaving until the sun was coming up. We were already hangover and by the following Monday morning on the local news, we had heard that two Irish men had been arrested following the rape of a 17-year-old girl. In the same place we were partying, only somewhere else in the woodland. She had gone to the police on the Sunday, it turns out they were her brother's friends. It was in the paper, but I don't know what her name was, I don't think they were allowed to release that information to the public. Now the horrible thing is, we saw them. I am 100% certain the two men and the girl we saw were those involved in the crime. I'm a little less certain of this, but the fox scream could very well have been her calling out for help. It wasn't scary in the slightest at the time, but thinking back on it still makes me sick to my stomach. Even makes me feel guilty about being obnoxious teenagers and ignoring the outside world to consume as much vodka as possible. Our music no doubt overwhelmed any other noise from that park that night. Horrible story, but no doubt they're still serving jail time. At least they should be. 
16 years ago, I was living in Borden, England. I was 13, walking home from school one evening, through the woods, and I heard this shrill scream when I was about 100 feet away from the edge of the woods. I quickened my pace seeing as the sun was setting. As I get to the second to last turn to get out of there, a two feet white sphere with a faint glow to it, flies out in front of me and hangs there, at face level, I am 6'3", for about one and a half seconds, and takes off with the same scream I had just heard. About two seconds after that, a black shadowy sphere launches out of the same bush, chasing the first sphere, stops dead in its tracks, and looks at me with two red glowing eyes, roars, think demonic silverback gorilla scream. After at least four to five seconds of inspecting me, then takes off after the first one. Cut to about ten-ish years ago, I'm having dinner with a friend's parents on the Rantha property, Olympia, Washington, and this story comes up. The father gets up after hearing what I have to say, and comes back with an old as hell picture of the shadow thing. He told me what I saw was a moth man, and that I was lucky it was hunting something else, because people who encounter it usually die. I live in a pretty rural area in southwest Nebraska, middle of nowhere, blah blah snore. Okay so my boyfriend and I were in a heated fight and decided to take it outside, so we wouldn't disturb anyone else in the house. So we go outside, past the tree claim at about 11 pm total darkness, just empty corn fields every which direction. We commenced screaming at each other and then seemingly out of the sky, we heard the loudest stampede. A herd of horses? Charging cattle? Demons? We whipped around to try and see into the blackness where the hell the noise was coming from, but there was nothing. Just this barreling monstrous unmistakable stampede noise and us in the massive darkness. We hauled back inside and to this day cannot explain what the hell that was. Note, we were nowhere near any train tracks by at least 15 miles. I live in the country, and I spent almost all of last year getting harassed in the middle of the night. I had this habit at the time of going on late night walks throughout the neighborhood or forest, and my family theorizes that I either got too close to where my neighbor was growing weed, or that someone saw me out and decided to take interest in me. The first thing that happened was that I started getting creepy feelings while out walking, like I was being watched from this one point just beyond the edge of the forest next to my house. I thought I was just letting my imagination get the better of me, until I found a condom in the exact spot I was getting the weird vibes from. After that, I would hear knocking on the wall that is actually past the tree line, tapping on the windows, and people talking. I did convince my mother to go check it out a few times, but whoever it was would already be running back through the forest by the time she got outside. Things got so bad that my uncle put up a security camera, but it was displaying a live feed as opposed to actually recording. He also insisted on monitoring from his house, for some reason, and never actually saw anyone on camera. Around this time, someone cut open the cover that was on my grill and stole a storage crate full of my clothing. Once the batteries in the camera died, my uncle decided that it was obviously just my imagination, and took the camera down. Not even a week later, I was walking to my grandparents' house, which is about 100 feet away, around 11 pm, I had forgotten to lock their door, when I saw a person in light-colored clothing duck behind their porch. I rushed back down to my house, and my mother offered to go instead of me, she had to chase the man off the property. She didn't see his face or anything, but on the bright side, he ran into a tree. The man was on my property in mid-November of last year, and my neighbor who grew weed in the forest somewhere died in December. Things more or less stopped since then, supporting my family's belief that it was just him and his associates playing some kind of sick joke. The only problem with that theory is that I heard a ringtone sound right outside my bedroom window earlier this year. Unfortunately, this isn't the scariest thing to happen to me involving a late night creep, just the scariest thing to happen in the middle of nowhere. I grew up in a small town in California. Our claim to fame is we are the exact center of California. The town is about a mile long with people scattered all over the mountainside. My grandparents' house is on a 10-acre property bordering the Sierra National Forest. We have neighbors lose by-by, we are unable to see their lights because of the thick trees. The house is built right at the back property line about 100 feet from the National Forest on a hill. To the left the hill rises and is filled with trees and brush you can only see about 20 feet in. To the left the hill drops and looks over a valley. 
We have mountain lions that scream in the distance every once in a while and it's one of the most comforting sounds to hear. The property has always given me an uneasy feeling. Everything just seems dead, we hardly see any wildlife despite being pretty deep in the woods. No birds, squirrels, or deer. Plants die and I hardly find any insects. When I was 8 to 10 years old, I lived with my grandparents. My room was on the right of the house and the windows faced the hill. I had bunk beds and slept on the top. Most nights would wake up in the middle of the night with freezing feet and I felt like something was in my room. One night, I woke up to a tug on my ankle. My eyes shot open I was petrified, my feet were freezing, my covers had been pushed up and my feet over the edge a bit. I just stayed still, then I felt a tug again, I looked to the foot of the bed and saw the face of a woman, she looked young but like she had been slightly mummified. She had a mischievous smile that was impossibly large on her face and her eyes were green. She didn't glow, but she seemed to have an aura around her. The scream got sucked out of my body, and I started kicking and then she was gone. I was too sacred to move, but I turned on my lamp the rest of the night. The next morning, I had a bruise on my ankle. My mom also has some creepy stories from when she was growing up there too. When my mom was about 16, her and my uncle age 14 would go running in the early mornings while it was still mostly dark. They would run down our driveway and along the road to the archway at the entrance of the neighborhood. As I mentioned before, this neighborhood is thick with trees, off to the left is two roads that lead up a hill to some homes and as a result is slightly cleared. One morning, they stared their run, it was closer to winter and so it stayed dark for their whole workout. Once reaching their halfway mark at the archway that they slowed to take a breather. My mother and uncle looked up the hill and noticed not too far from them a shape that was moving parallel along the hill. Its gait was too wide to be a bear or mountain lion. As my mother recalls, she gasped and at that moment the shape turned towards her and my uncle and it had two blood red eyes. They immediately took off running back home. At first, it seemed not to follow them, but after running round a bend, mom saw it in the brush running alongside them keeping pace at first, then cutting across the road, its eyes flashing. It disappeared again. A little further and my uncle slowed a bit and mom looked back and seeing the figure behind them, the thing's red eyes on them. By this time, they could see the house lights and raced up the hill. They never went running again, I never really believed her. But five years ago, I was driving that same road, and I swear I saw something running alongside my car in the brush. I live out in rural Oklahoma and I frequently photograph landscapes and abandoned buildings. I was driving away from the city way out in the country on dirt roads when I passed a burnt down house with just the brick chimney remaining in the middle of where the house once stood. I am in the middle of nowhere at this point, almost to Guthrie, Oklahoma, this is a prime stop for me, so I pull over to check it out by myself, and shoot some photos. Everything in the house was charred or burnt completely, there were little girls shoes in a pile, half burned mattresses and some old mason jars strewn about as well as other common household items, books, shelves, couches, old food, etc., so I'm assuming the fire was an accident. It was a great looking place and would have been awesome to stay and shoot more of, but when I finally reached the corner of the house and turned around to figure out where I was gonna shoot from, my eyes were immediately drawn to the fireplace, which I had only seen from the back, where there sat two dolls inside sitting upright hands sewn to each other staring at me with no burn marks or black soot or ash anywhere on them. Completely untouched by the fire, just a little dirty and slightly aged. I was by myself and I'm not a huge fan of dolls anyway, so I stayed long enough to get a photo of the dolls and sprinted to my truck and left. I tried to go back about 5 or 6 days after this with friends, because there was a cellar I never made it in, but wanted to check out and the entire house had been cleaned up, foundation too, and was just a dirt plot for sale where the house was with 150 plus acres available. I used to have a girlfriend who was half an Easter Islander. Her mother was from the island, as they call it, and she had close bonds with many of her relatives from there. It is well known that the people from the island are a very hermetic community, with much regard for ancestors and respect for ancient traditions. They are very friendly and hospitable but only to people who respect them and their culture, land and traditions. Their society isn't materialistic and people worry more about family and friends than possessions or success. Their ancestors, history and roots are very important to them. Moais, scattered all around the island, 
are commemorations of past leaders or important people and it's widely believed by the locals that their spirits protect the islanders. I was on the island visiting my girlfriend, shortly after her mother died. She was buried in the island cemetery in Hongaroa. She took me to her grave a few days after I arrived, and insisted I acted with a lot of reverence to the people that rested there, because the spirits don't like outsiders. She also told me that if foreigners came after dark, they'd be scared away by the spirits, who need their rest. I didn't think much of it and just dismissed it as religious beliefs. A few days later, her cousin, a full native tour guide that lived on the island, took us on a special trekking tour that isn't available to tourists. She said she'd give us a treat. She took us to a valley that was considered sacred by the old people of the island. We climbed down a very steep cliff and eventually got to a small cave. She told us this was the cave of virgins. Girls were kept there for a year in order for them to not see sunlight or be deflowered, and they would be given to the winner of an ancient competition among the men of the island. She explicitly told us to not speak loudly, take anything, even a pebble, and be careful with what I touched as we crawled inside this four-foot-tall hole, despite no one else being there. I assumed it was just another reverence to the old people thing. On our way back, we crossed the sacred valley again and the view was breathtaking. The tour guide, my girlfriend's cousin, casually mentioned the stars must be beautiful at night from there, but she'd never camp in the area. I asked why, she said the spirits didn't like it. I insisted and asked, well, what can they really do to you? She gave me a serious look and told me they could do anything to your mind. Make you panic, go crazy or even kill or rape you in your sleep. I thought, wow, these people are superstitious. After this, we kept walking for a bit in silence, and then she clarified that in order to stay there at night, you were supposed to state your name out loud. Say you mean no intrusion and will not take anything, that you are from the island and your mother is so-and-so, daughter of so-and-so, of the so-and-so family. If you're a foreigner, she said, they might get mad even if you do this. We trekked up a hill to see the sunset and a small stone caught my eye. The island is mostly grassland and dirt with no trees or small rocks, but there was a small stone lying in the middle of the hill, laying on the grass that clearly didn't belong there. It looked like a polished, round piece of coral. I grabbed it, looked at it, and put it in my backpack, didn't think about it again. Before I tell you this next part, I should clarify, I never have nightmares, ever. The last time I remember having one was when I was 13. It just doesn't happen to me, and I don't get scared with these stories. I respect them, don't argue that they're impossible, but I just don't get creeped out. After dark, we went to sleep to my girlfriend's cabin. That night, I was killed again and again in my dreams, in the most horrifying nightmares I've ever had. I vividly recall my best friend looking at me straight into the eyes with rage and choking me with his hands, I also recall drowning. The rest was so bad I kind of blocked it out since then. I woke up several times sweating thinking, oh god, I'm glad that's over and then went back to sleep only to have the same horrible things happen to me over and over again. The next day, I gave the stone to my girlfriend and told her to get rid of it. Haven't had a nightmare since. Last fall, I got a call from my manager saying they were overstaffed. And because I had already hit overtime that week, I wouldn't have to go in that night. I was super relived because it was a great day out and on nice days, I usually go on hikes at this nearby nature park a couple miles from my house. This park is about 30 miles of trail, bike paths, and rivers. Anyways, fast forward an hour or two and I found myself sitting alone at the loading dock for small boats and kayaks, which was down a narrow path pretty secluded and far away from the other trails. All of the sudden, I hear footsteps and out comes this older guy wearing normal hiking gear carrying a lunchbox. He stands above me and we are both just staring out into the water. We started talking and he was a really nice man, he even offered to cut off a piece of his apple that he was snacking on for me. I declined because I was still a little weary of him. After about 5 to 7 minutes or so, he tells me to enjoy the rest of my day off and heads back up the pathway to the main trails. I remember leaving not long after him, maybe 45 seconds to a minute later, but I never caught up to him which I thought was strange because it was a pretty long path, and he didn't seem incredibly fast. I made my way back to the gravel parking lot where I had left my truck and decided to look at the bulletin board to see if there were any events coming up at the park, 
because they normally have food trucks or 5Ks out in the weekends. Instead I saw a poster for a missing man last seen there at the park, it was him. The man that I had just talked with not 20 minutes ago. Craziest part about this was that the flyer that was hanging was clearly pretty old as it had some water damage and a few tears in it. I talked to the nearest park employee I could find and he said that they would keep an eye out, but the guy was never found and his family still has no idea what happened to him. I don't know if I'm crazy, but I'm sure the man I talked with was the exact same man that was on the flyer. I am an archaeological field technician, and my work has taken me all over the western United States. I have come across a lot interesting things and weird stuff on survey projects, but in my second year working in Canyon of the Ancients National Monument, Southwest Colorado, my field crew and I came across something truly odd. We had been working on a huge five-year survey project for the better part of two years, and I had become pretty familiar with the animals and landscape. You often find animal bones and carcasses out in the desert, but while we were pin-flagging artifacts on a site when my coworker and I came across a large mummified bird body. It was really big for a wild bird in the region and clearly wasn't a grouse or quail. After looking at it for a moment, we determined that it was a chicken. Now there are farms down there and people do keep fowl and livestock, but we were easily 15 to 20 miles away from the nearest house. What's more upon closer inspection the chicken had been eviscerated, a clean cut had been made from its posterior all the way to its beak and the guts had been removed. On top of all of that, it had also gone untouched by other animals for what had to have been at least a month. There's not an abundance of food for wildlife in the area and a majority of the predators are very opportunistic. After a few minutes, we carried on flagging the site. As we walked along, we came across another chicken in the same condition, then another and another. After about 20 minutes of flagging out the site boundary, we found somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 or 30 eviscerated chickens scattered all over the mesa top. Just as we were starting to talk about how weird this all was, our boss called us over to a nearby cliff edge saying, if you guys think that's weird, come look at this. What we found next was what really got me. As we approached, we found our boss standing on a boulder just off the cliff edge looking down. I could smell the distinct smell of rotting meat. He pointed to a big old pinion growing up out of the dirt, and there at its base, I saw a severed bull elk head wired in an upright position facing exactly due south. Again the elk's flesh had been left relatively untouched by other animals, however, I will admit that the eyes and nose had been eaten away, likely by rodents. The rack was six point and gorgeous, but the whole scene way out in the middle of nowhere was really strange. About 10 feet from the elk there was a lean to that looked to have collapsed in on itself, and we determined that was where the rotting meat smell was coming from, but already being a little freaked out none of us had the balls to take a peek inside. I'd like to say I had a photograph, but my phone from that time died on my and I never bothered to save the picture. So we recorded the site and went on with the rest of our day. Nothing too out of ordinary happened, but we had a really uneasy feeling that we weren't alone out there. In the two days that followed we finished up the survey block, we found some odd stuff, mostly severed chicken legs, specifically where we were parking our truck before we headed out. We never went back to that site and there was a lot of speculation about what it was we had found. But that part of the world has a lot of history and not all of it is pretty. I don't believe in a god or a religion of any kind, but I do believe there are powers out there we do not understand. My boss thought it was a bunch of crazy people on meth, but my other crew member said it was something else, something I'm honestly not even too comfortable writing out what he said it was, but the short answer is black magic. I am not a superstitious person and the wilderness is my happy place, but that place? That scared me unlike anything I've ever run across. On a final note, I should say that about six months later I had switched crews and was working in a different part of the survey area on a crew with a highly respected, older archaeologist who's lived in the region his whole life, we'll call him Glenn. Again, we were recording a site, this time on a ridge line in a pinion or juniper grove. As I was making the site map, I found Glenn standing on the edge of the trees looking out over the valley. Me being the annoying yammering kid I was, I wandered over to chat him up. When I inquired about what he was doing, he shushed me and said, out there, on that boulder. He pointed across the valley. It took me a minute, but I saw what Glenn was pointing at. It was a large tan sandstone boulder with what looked like another egg-shaped blackish rock on two of it. What is that? Glenn said as he peered out at it. What the rock? 
I replied. Not the rock, the thing on the rock. He replied as we looked at it for a while and then much to my surprise, the rock stood up, looked at us for a half second and then dropped off the boulder and walked off into the brush on the slope. It was a person for sure, but they looked like they were covered in mud, or charcoal or something and they weren't wearing regular clothes. It was hard to tell and it was pretty creepy that they were just watching us from across the valley. I have two stories the first happened when I was at a summer camp. It was time to go to sleep, but me and a friend decided to stay up. Once everyone was asleep, we went to a stop next to a window and looked up at the stars. Outside the window, there was a view of the lake, dock, and trees that surrounded it. The only light that lit the area were the few lights around the dock and the moonlight. However, me and the friend I was with saw something moving within the trees. I thought it was in my imagination until I heard my friend stammering, did you just see that? I told them yeah, and we stayed to see if we saw it again. We did, this time, it was much closer however, we could make out a odd shadow-like figure. We thought it was human. It's so tall, my friend said. We saw the legs and thought maybe it was some deer? Maybe bear? No, they aren't around this area. We hadn't heard of any deers or bears in this area. We decided to go check it for any footprints in the morning and headed to bed. Next morning when we went to the spots we saw the shadow figure was, we found not only footprints, but dolls. These dolls looked old, like dolls you'd find at some vintage store or something. But the most scary thing about the dolls was that they looked so human-like, and those eyes that pierced into your soul terrified me and my friend. We haven't told anybody. I went on a camping trip with my dad and a couple uncles, my half-sister was along too. We were going to meet up with a bunch of guys and their families from my uncle's military unit. My dad went on ahead us while we chilled and went at a more sedate pace. My uncles are pretty cool, but they are hardcore campers or survivalists. So they suggested we take a more scenic route through some woods. It was kind off the planned route, and my sister and I had a lot of fun as my uncles were messing around with walkies and pretending to scout places. Campfires were fun and more relaxed with drinks than when my dad was around and my uncles told some pretty good stories. Things started getting weird though. My uncles one day stopped joking around and actually started taking proper looks around. They wouldn't tell us why, but I guess that something had spooked them. My sister is better at the tracking stuff and she started noticing things weren't right, that someone was following us. Then we started seeing things carved in the trees ahead, meaningless symbols. I confronted my uncles. They told me they had a feeling that they were watched when they first entered the woods, but kept quiet as there wasn't any evidence. They told me that the evidence they found was off, too obvious. The man that was watching us could have concealed himself much easier than he did, but he didn't want to. He was trying to make us take a different route as my uncles would alter course depending on the signs of him being there. I originally thought this might be an elaborate joke, but I saw something in their eyes that changed my mind, fear. These are hardened vets and they were scared. That's when we started seeing him, at a distance, through the trees, it was deliberate. My uncles didn't chase him, as they didn't want to leave us alone. They shouted at him, pointed a gun at him. He didn't care, he just stared at us, he looked like a wild man, ragged clothes and a lot of hair. My uncles took turns taking a watch at night, no more jokes, on edge, gun out told us to use our whistles if he got to close and gave us knives if he got really close. It was a really dark night all of us around the fire, but looking into the trees, and we heard him speak. His voice haunts me. Why? Because it was strangely normal. Completely civil, almost smooth. Not the kind you would expect from as my uncles called him the wild man. He said good evening, nearly pissed myself, the voice was really close. My uncles went quiet as they started looking for where they thought he was. My sister was the first to speak she said, who are you? What do you want? It was quiet for a while. Then even closer from a different direction. Interesting questions, I'm afraid I don't really want to answer them. I caught glimpse of him, he was smiling. I shouted and pointed and my uncle took a shot. He moved away, one of my uncles chased after him with a torch and gun whilst the other stayed with us. He didn't catch him. None of us slept that night. We took a different route coming into a clearing with a largish body of water. He was on the other side, he waved. Then disappeared back into the woods. 
Then we saw what he wanted us to see, a campsite, but it was a wreck, it looked trashed. My uncles reckoned it wasn't more than a few days old. One of the sleeping bags was soaked in blood, the other was ripped like someone had been dragged out of it. There was human hair as well, torn out, with clumps of skin on. It was too much for me and my sister. We found the others a day later, the police and rangers were called. The two missing were a young newlywed couple really into camping and fitness. There was a search, my uncles and their military buddies actually went and searched the woods before the police and rangers. Nobody found anything, just weird things carved into the trees. But the symbols were just gibberish, they literally had no known meaning. A few months ago driving through rural southern Oklahoma on my way to Texas near sundown. I misread the directions and pull off at the wrong exit and end up in some potent town after following the road in hopes of finding the on-ramp. I see a gas station which is good news to me since those are usually situated near off on ramps or on roads that the highway traffic filters onto or off of. I pull up a no luck, it's by itself on a plot of unkempt land and woods surrounding it. Good time for a bathroom break and a fountain drink, so I pull in. I'm the only car, not even a car for the attendant. Whatever, probably they're a teenager who gets rides. It's dim inside and I don't see the attendant. Probably they're stocking the coolers or goofing on in the back, it doesn't seem like a busy place. Usual mom and pop looking place with worn out linoleum, parts missing or tiles gone altogether, stained ceiling tiles from water probably, not well stocked, some coolers running but not the lights inside etc, you get the point. I look around at the selection not hoping for much, but at least the big name things. Some items look like they are straight out of the 80s or 90s with their package, and it's amusing to me because my first thought is that I know some companies just don't really update labeling. Some canned things look rusty, but many items look current. I see movement in the corner of my eye and look up and see it's the reflective curved mirror to my right, and I look behind me and the attendant is suddenly there behind the counter quietly watching. Hey there, I say to be polite and to break the slight creepy feeling. The attendant is young, maybe between 25 and 30, old enough to drive their own vehicle. But I figured then that maybe circumstances lead to them not having a car, so that was my rationalization for that. The attendant nods dutifully, but she doesn't say anything. Her hands are resting on the countertop and her body language looks relaxed and normal. I don't think anything of it and go back to browsing. I get a feeling like I'm being watched and glance up and she's still watching me. It's slow, I'm the only person, she's probably bored. I rationalize her stare whatever way I can. I look up again and longer, but only enough to get a good look at her face and expression. Usually when people look at you, it seems their eyes move a little around your face, but she was staring dead at me and seemed to have no expression. Her body hadn't moved at all it seemed like. It goes from being bored and dutiful attendant to unnerving. If I keep glancing up, I'll look suspicious or weird and I believe that I'm being paranoid, and my own body language is probably actually the weird thing, so I use the reflective dome thing to look up without moving my head. She is still staring right at me and not moving. I half expect her to make eye contact suddenly through the mirror, so I look away and try to tone down my paranoia. I take two candies from the shelf and look up at her and I ask her, are these $1.99 or $1.89? It was the only thing I could come up with, I don't know why I grabbed two. She looks at me, the candy, me again, and it seems like she's not going to answer. The quiet is getting awkward. Finally she says, $1.99. Her voice sounded normal, it was just how it came out. It will sound goofy, but bear with me when I say it was like listening to William Shatner. She smiled with her mouth but her eyes stayed emotionless like it was the upper half of somebody else's face. How her smile died away so quick seemed robotic. I wasn't sure if she was just irritated and feigning customer service until I left and she could go back to whatever she was doing to what, but I got the urge to quickly finish and leave and felt unwelcome. The drink machine was out of order, so I got a bottle and a Snickers bars with those sayings on the side of them in part to assure myself that I was not time traveling or something bizarre. I would have looked for the newest item, but I felt pressed to leave. I felt nervous going up to pay and didn't look at her until I had to speak to her. Her movements were not fine as if she struggled with her fingers, but she otherwise seemed to be familiar with her limbs. 
I tried to act like I didn't notice when she reached for the Snickers, and I guess overshot the distance and her knuckles knocked on the countertop. It reminded me of a crane claw in those claw games, except her hand didn't bend weird at the wrist or anything. Slow day? I asked partially from curiosity. She looked it up at me and paused like she was thinking then she glanced to the door to the back room that was open. I expected to find somebody standing there and to also wet my pants. There was nobody, but the room was dark, and from what I could see, it looked like a normal back room with boxes and stuff. Yes, she said suddenly with a weird inflection that didn't seem to match the context of the conversation. That's the only way I can think to describe it. She grabbed the bottle fine and grabbed the wad of cash to pull the bills from instead of grabbing the bills directly from the till. She took the little tray out of the till to shake the coin she needed into her hand. When she gave me my change, she sort of had it in her fist and just sort of opening her fist into my palm. Didn't ask for a bag or anything. I said to have a good night and glanced at the back room door for no reason, it just happened. Still nobody there. I turned to use my back to open the door and she was staring at me like she was before. I got to my car and put my things into the passenger seat and backed out. Before pulling to the road, I looked and she was gone again. The back room door was closed now and it had become dark enough in that time that I was there for the streetlights to come on. Not sure if something otherworldly or if just the world's most awkward attendant. When I was around 10 or 11, I went on holidays to the French mountains with my parents. We were staying at a campsite and decided to drive through the mountains in hopes of spotting some eagles. We stopped for a moment to get out and look around at the wheat field and hay bales for our right, as we saw a few eagles sitting there. When we make our way back to our car, I look at the forest that was on our right and see something further into the trees. I looked harder to make it out, but what I could see scared the hell out of me. It was like some hairless half-man, half who knows what, and from what I could see, it had no face. What scared me the most was that it was just standing completely still, looking in my direction. I quickly got the car and as my stepfather began to drive off, I saw it quickly turn to follow our car and break off further into the tree line. Little to say, I was terrified. It was so long ago that I'm sure it was probably just my young mind playing tricks on me, who knows maybe it was just a wild French streaker or something. But it still scared me enough that as soon as we got back to our cabin, I was looking up whatever animals were in the area just so I could make sense of what I saw. Went on a mountain hike in Transylvania with a group of friends from school, and way up, after maybe 12 to 14 kilometers of trekking, we saw a house, was in the middle of nowhere. It had a barn, with a few animals, couple of cows, chicken, etc. As we get closer, we see a few people, a guy and five to six women, not sure if there were more inside. The dude comes to greet us, barely speaking the language. We had a hard time understanding what he's saying. They lived without electricity, gas, anything. This is in the early 90s, so there's no internet, mobile phones to worry about, at least for most people. Anyway, they all looked weird, kinda dumb expressions on their face, we can barely understand each other. They asked us who's the president now, and if we want some milk. They look at our clothes and shoes weirdly, curious, like who knows when is the last time they had human contact. Or maybe there were more crazies around those parts, I don't know. Not sure to this day what was going on. It's not typical in the region, so we kinda freaked out, especially cause the dude looked a bit disturbed, and we were too young. We were looking around to see if there's more of them, paranoia was getting to us, thinking there must be a village nearby. What was also weird is that all the women kept their distance, and never got close to us. Like he was guarding them, or checking us out, if it's safe for them. One of my friends kept saying we don't want their milk, and we need to go, cause it's getting dark. We walked calmly for a while, then when we thought we're out of their sight, bolted like crazy out of there. Needless to say, we camped after a few hours, and we always had one person awake to keep watch. We told people that were living in the villages near that area, about the mountain people, and they didn't believe us. They said nobody lives there, up in the mountains. The forest of Desierto de los Leones is literally just that, a forest but it's called a national park, it's on the mountains outside Mexico City. 
I remember working as teenager as a volunteer on Leyendas Nocturnas in the ex-convento de Desierto de los Leones just outside Mexico City. In simple terms, it's simply a church and an ex-monastery. The ex-monastery is literally on top of the mountain and it's surrounded by dense trees and wildlife. Leyendas Nocturnas was pretty much one of those terror tours depicting creepy tales of monks and monsters. I was casted as a teen to play as one of the hooded monks at the beginning of the tour who just stand still and hold a candle to set the atmosphere. It was a pretty simple job. There were like five stories told in the whole tour and one of the last ones of them was focused around a demon, wearing bird wings and getting flashed by stage lights, so it seemed like it was being exorcised. The thing that was unusual was that the second time I gave the tour after giving the tour and thanking all of our guests in the main hall, I stepped outside with some colleagues and started to smoking to relax. The thing that creeped me out is that after five minutes of being there, I saw what seemed like three figures strolling around the complex in line. But the worst part was that they seemed to be wearing the same bird wings as my colleague who was standing next to me wore to scare the guests. I know that we only had one bird wing costume but I saw the same stiff prop wings moving along the tree line of the forest. I was spooked all right. I didn't return to the tours for other reasons, but thinking back at it was terrifying. I'm a ranger at a state park in South Carolina. One day last year, mid-August, I was leaving my park to go fuel up the ranger truck. As I left the park, I noticed a black trash bag sitting on the edge of the road, and our side of the road too. There's a landfill further down the road past the park, so our border roads can get pretty trashy sometimes. I figured this was a bag of household trash, so I would stop on my way back from the gas station, and toss the bag in the back of truck to throw it away. When I get back to our road from the gas station, I pull halfway onto the shoulder, put my hazards on, and get out the truck to walk towards the bag. At this point, I see flies all around it, and blood oozing from the bag, spilling onto the pavement. Hunting season in South Carolina had just started a couple of days before, so my first thought was, oh, it's just a deer carcass. I picked the bag up, walked to the back of the truck and went to swing the bag to get up into the bed. When I do this, a bloody horn pops out of the bag. Not antlers, a horn. At this point, I'm curious. I go into my truck and grab a pair of gloves and go back to the bag. I kind of peer into the bag and pull the horn back, so I can see what was in there. It was a goat. All I saw was the head, because I was too creeped out to investigate further. The skin on the face and head had been removed and I just remember seeing the white connective tissue and the ghostly eyes staring at me. As soon as I saw his rectangular pupils, I backed away, took the gloves off, and got back into the truck. Dumpster pickup was that day, so I threw him in the dumpster and tried to forget about it. I told my roommate at the time about it, and he said if he gets a knock at our door at 2 a.m., I live on the park, and it was a group of people dressed up in black robes, that he would get me and I'd have the honor of dealing with them. But, to this day, I still don't quite understand what I stumbled upon that afternoon. I wasn't at work, but I was jogging way out in the forest at a place I have never gone to before. There were no other normal looking cars around in the lot, meaning no other vehicles that looked like they could actually run. I'm in Washington and lots of forest trails start with just a gravel lot. This lot was huge and there were several broken down looking vehicles, some with spray paint, some missing tires which isn't exactly normal, but not super sus either. I immediately got creeped out, I asked the friend I was with if she had been here before. She had, but it had been a long time. As we pull up I, notice a dude in a wife beater like tank top apparently trying to fix a tire on a broken down white truck. I remember thinking he kinda looked like a tweaked. I don't know, I figured since I was in good shape, I could probably outrun most people at the time and wasn't too worried. Mind you, we are out in the woods at this point, not many people out here. I'm already getting bad vibes, but I ignore it. We get out, stretch and get ready for our run. We trail run long distances, so it would be a long one. We took off up the trail, I look around for the dude but no longer see him. The first part of the trail is uphill, I'm focused on that. We get over that and come to a flat area, it's an old logging road. We cut across and keep running. We pass several more logging roads like this before we decide to walk for a while. It had been over 3 miles at this point. 
we are slowly walking and cut across another logging road and start the trail towards a sort of ravine. I can see a bridge up ahead. The whole way up, I'm nervous and looking back, it seems so quiet, there is no noise other than our feet and voices. I talk with my friend and pretend not to be scared. We are about to cross over into into the forest, the logging road right behind me and I hear it, clear as day, the sound of a flute or pan flute as I was later told. Very clear loud flute music playing in the forest. I can hear it echoing off the trees and ravine. For a second, I think I am imagining it. I stop dead in my tracks, I look at my friend and say run, and we sprint over three miles back to the car. I never saw a person or where the music was coming from. Now I think about this and think it could be nothing, a person walking and playing an instrument. But there were no cars in the parking lot and it was a rainy weekday morning. We were over three miles into a remote forest that the usual hiking crowd doesn't really venture to. I don't know what to make of it, but it was super scary. I feel I should trust my gut feeling. I've never been so scared in the woods in my life, and since my first instinct was to run, I ran. No a work story, but my pop had a property in the south coast of Western Australia. It was a little inland, surrounded by bush and alongside a river and big ass canyon and about an hour drive along dirt and gravel roads to the nearest town. The main house was about a 100 meters walk to a shed that housed the only generator that powered the whole property. Unfortunately, the shed was next to the airstrip that kangaroos loved. Two spooky things would happen. At night, you'd have to walk out to the shed to turn off the generator, then walk back to the house with a crappy little torch. Sometimes, You'd make the mistake of shining the torch down the airstrip and catch the eyes of about 30 kangaroos just staring at you, about 10 meters away. Safe to say as kids, we would absolutely leg it back to the house and lock all the doors and windows. During the day, several of my family members have sworn up and down that they have looked down towards the end of the airstrip and seen a very large shape run across the field on all fours. Too big to be a dog, way too big to be a cat. It could have been anything, but it's a terrifying thought especially when you come across a mangled kangaroo body. My dad used to work doing towing for CAA, like AAA but Canadian, and would park his truck in the dead of night to maybe eat something, check his work laptop, this was 2000 to 2005 or so, and smoke some cigs. No partners, each driver was one man in one truck. He would park across the river from an abandoned area of factories, canning places, docks, etc., that was visible during the day. It's then that he notices that there are lights and smoke coming from the abandoned buildings. Not fire, but like they're lit up and running. Now, these were abandoned and ready to be torn down any year now, and he knew the area well. My dad had the foresight to always bring our digital camera. He took pictures, posted them to the auto tech forums he always hung out on when he got home that morning. According to multiple local people, they would see that happen too, and it was a well-known local phenomenon. I assumed the building was on a timed lighting or power system, like my school was, and they just left it going. He also had his fair share of being called to tow totaled cars and helping out the caller in need, only to start driving and the person disappears. The car would be there of course, but he'd bring it to the place they stored ruined cars. His colleagues all assumed they were the only ones. I have no clue if the cars were involved in a death and neither did he, his job ended there. The last one is completely different, but one time, he just found a guy asleep in his truck that he'd left parked to go eat something at a fast food joint. Turned out to be a guy that was drunk and thought it was his truck. It was not. I used to work security at a Dillard's clothing factory. Second shift could become third when my relief calls off. I had to walk the empty factory each hour as if it was going to be infiltrated. Sometimes, I would hear a quiet conversation in the distance. Of course when I check it out nothing's there. One night, a guy came and stood in our parking lot for like 3 hours on the phone. It was public property, so I didn't have to say anything to him. But when I walked through the factor my third hour, I heard a whisper. Me thinking I'm tired, I ignore it. Once I heard it again, I got chills and said I can't hear you real loud, and as if it was directly in my head a voice said, make him go away. I still get freaked out telling this story. I worked part-time as a security guard at the community college I was attending right after high school. We had rotating shifts, 
so once or twice a month, I would end up on either the 6 midnight or midnight 6 a.m. shift. The area around the college was wooded and residential so at night the campus was very quiet, it was a traditional community college, so nobody lived on campus. During the night shifts, there was always two of us on, but one stayed in dispatch, campus security office, and the other would go on roving patrol which involved driving the campus, doing static surveillance and checking all the buildings at least twice during each shift. I always opted to do the roving because this was around 2000 PSP, pre-smartphone, and sitting around watching grainy black and white images of the parking lots just didn't pass the time very well. One night, I was walking one of the buildings checking to make sure all the interior doors were locked. It was a long two-story building with a single hall and classrooms lining both sides. The only motion sensor lights in these buildings were in the main hall and we would occasionally have to go turn off lights inside classrooms that had been left on. As I climbed the stairs to the second floor, I looked in the small window on the door and saw a pitch black hall as usual. When I opened the door, I noticed a faint light start emanating from an open door down the hall. This was already a little poltergeisty, because the motion lights only kicked on as you started walking down the hall, so the grayish light coming from the door was spilling into a dark part of the hallway. I got to the open door and inside was a large TV on one of those rolling carts sitting in the corner. The TV was just showing snow static and I rationalized that I must have just not seen the glow when I looked through the window, and some careless adjunct left this thing on when they left for the day. I reached over to turn the light for the classroom on and nothing happens. This in and of itself was not that unusual since a lot of the buildings at this CC had been built in the 1950s and had lighting issues all the time. There was enough light coming from the hall, so I just started to make my way to the TV to turn it off. I got about three steps into the classroom when the TV volume kicked on full blast with that static sound. Well, as you can probably guess, I noped it the hell out of there. I have never been a fan of horror and I only mention the poltergeist thing, because I have seen references to the TV in the movie before. I say this to mean, I didn't have a particularly active imagination and wasn't about to attribute it to anything paranormal, but suffice it to say, I chose the static guard shift for the next couple of months after that. Live on a farm in rural California, usually do the irrigation at night, so the water doesn't evaporate. It'll get up to 104 Fahrenheit sometimes, you're literally throwing money away on water. We have owls around and local laws say when they nest you can't disturb them, not that I would anyway, they're beautiful creatures. Of course, they come with the semi-creepy ominous hooting, and every now and then a guttural screech, and sometimes, you'll hear the anguished cries of some animal being carried off in the night, pretty scary in and of itself, especially when it comes out of nowhere, but you get used to it. Well, one night, I'm out fixing berms before they break open, mostly just watching water come out of the canal, kind of a boring job, your mind will turn off, guaranteed. All of a sudden, I hear a scream directly above me, some 30 feet, then immediately after there is a rustling in the tree overhead, and something splashes in the water not 10 feet away. It thrashes for a second and then abruptly stops. Took me about two minutes of questioning what the hell happened and peeing my pants while holding my shovel like a Spartan spear before remembering the owls. I figured it was probably just some unfortunate critter that fought its way out of the bird's grasp not knowing it was essentially dead before it hit the ground, though I guess not literally in this case. Lo and behold, after we finish irrigating and the water dries up, there's a muddy dead varmint in about the right spot, probably a gopher, though it could have been a bloated squirrel. Its head was not quite ripped completely off. I used to work as an independent contractor for a fireworks company. This was a company that shipped, fused and set up displays around my state for New Year's and 4th of July. So basically for months at a time, we're keeping $500,000 worth of TNT in a storage container, adding to several tons. We kept the container in an empty lot in the middle of a field, I assume because of something to do with fire code. Anyway so during the day, my crewmates are polishing and maintaining the cannon rigs or fusing fireworks. But there was no security guard so every day, we would draw straws to see who would spend the night there. One night, I drew the straw. Now the lot doesn't contain much, mainly just the container, a tool shed, a single light near a picnic table we have lunch at and several 18-wheelers and a couple bulldozers. The lot was surrounded by a simple chain-link fence with barbed wire. 
other than oddly ominous storage warehouse about 2,000 feet away, it was just a massive field and super pitch black. To say that the environment was creepy would be an understatement. There was no electrical outlet to charge your phone, since the lot was so far from the power lines and also something something blah blah power lines and explosives don't mix. Other than whatever music you play, you just have the night sounds around you. Every gust of wind makes the grass move and you feel a serial killer could be stalking you. Jack rabbits move around and snap twigs which cause you to jump. If you caught one with your flashlight, the first thing you're greeted with is a massive reflective eye. Rattlesnakes are a common sight, but you can't spot them fairly easily on the gravel. I tried to also not pay attention to the fact that I was guarding several tons of explosives that if suddenly one reacted in the middle of my watch, there would be no reaction time. The explosion would have leveled the lot to nothing. Finally, the kicker was coyotes. They would yip and even chuckle which reminded me of hyenas. When you saw one behind the fence, they'd show no fear, just a predatory stare. On this night, I finished around and was watching YouTube when I looked up and saw three coyotes in the middle of the lot, probably sneaking through the opening in the gate. I shouted to scare them off, but still decided to climb into a big rig and just took a nap until sunrise despite being told to stay active. I ended up watching several more times until I eventually left. Creepiest job I ever did now that I think about it. I worked in a small town grocery store for the graveyard shift. The store was small enough that it was usually just me up front and one guy stocking the dairy department in the back. The usual customers were stone heads, drunks, and the occasional mom buying diapers. The doors were censored to chime every time someone came in, so I was aware of how many people were in the store at all times. It was around 4 am and a really slow night only 3 people had come in and out in total. I decided to run to the bathroom real quick right as I was about to open the door, I heard a woman's piercing scream like from a horror movie, it sounded like it came from the front of the store. Thinking some woman was being chased or kidnapped or anything, I ran to the front, but no one was there and the doors never had chimed saying anyone came in or even poked their head in. But I still clearly remember that scream and how it had echoed through the store and made my blood run chill. When I was younger, I lived near Pascula Forest, Bog Trails. As I've lived near the forest for years, I wasn't scared of it. One morning at 6 am, I went for a run. I had my headphones on and I listened to the music. As I was running all alone, almost two kilometer in the forest where there weren't any people, I suddenly had an eerie feeling. So I took my headphones off and started to really listen my surroundings. On the trail that I was running, I heard not only my footsteps but someone else's. I didn't want to look behind because I was really scared. As I speed up, the other footsteps speeded up as well. When I slowed down, they did as well. I finally decided to look behind and there was a bald middle-aged guy, with a gold earring and jean jacket and jeans, running behind me. I got more scared, but thought of just running and looking at him at the same time. As I looked at him, he smiled in a creepy way, had an eye contact with me all this time and ran next to me. He didn't say anything. I was scared to say anything, so we ran like this for couple minutes. After couple minutes of us running in such an awkward and creepy way he asks, so, where are we running? I said, I don't know where you are running, but I am running home. Again 30 seconds of a weird pause, we still are running together. He then looks at me in a creepy way and says, well, this was fun, we should run together another time as well. He smiled and stopped running. For the last one kilometer, I ran as fast as I could still being weirded out. It's interesting that the area where I lived, everybody knew everybody, he wasn't a familiar face. But after that experience, I haven't gone on a run in the forest ever again. I worked as the county historic preservationist in southern Appalachia, working on the buildings and properties the county owned. One of the benefits included with my job was living on-site at one of the historic properties. The historic house was an imposing brick mansion built in the 1810s and I lived in a small caretaker's house about 20 feet away. This was in the backwoods, so to deter trespassing and vandalism the county had built an 8-foot tall fence around the entire 5-acre parcel and put barbed wire on top of the fence. I mention this all just to show it was basically impossible for anyone, or anything, to jump or climb over the fencing and onto the property. One night, after working late at another property, I pulled up to my entrance gate, 
let myself in, locked it behind me and then drove the 100 yards down the gravel road to my house. There were no lights on the property so I could only see by my headlights. As I turned my car around the corner of one of the outbuildings and parked it, my light shone on a thing that I still have a hard time describing effectively. It was the size of a deer, but with long spindly legs and long shaggy hair. Almost like a taller maned wolf, if you've ever seen pictures of one of those. That alone shook me as there was no way something of that size should have been able to get through, or over my fencing. What follows is absolutely true, I got out of my car to get a better look at what the hell the thing was, and as I opened the door and got out, the thing took off running away, not on four legs, but on two. I literally watched this thing raise its back up, stand at full height on its back legs and sprint away. I absolutely freaked out at that point, grabbed my mag light and my shotgun from inside and tried to find the thing again. There was no trace, no tracks or anything, I have no idea how it got in or out of my property. I didn't sleep at all that night, just sat on my couch with my shotgun watching my front door, hoping that whatever I saw didn't come back and burst in. I cannot explain what the hell I saw that night but it still raises the hair on my neck every time I think about it.